Please give an international welcome to Christina Aguilera. My first actual national television performance was like at a um, star search when I was eight years old. Long before American Idol topped the TV ratings, there was star search. The series gave aspiring performers the chance to appear on television and compete for a $100,000 grand prize. It would be a ritual. You know, me, my mom, my grandma, we would watch it every Saturday when it was on. On March 15th, 1990, Christina made her national television debut on the popular syndicated talent show. I couldn't see the audience because at that age I actually wore these little glasses. I didn't want to wear them on stage. And here she's this little teeny thing. And she was wearing my concert blouse with a belt on it with this big gaudy belt, but I let her work because she loved it. I went out there and and I just, you know, I just did what, what, I, what I always, you know, did before and got into it and, and um, again, it was just something that always just came naturally. First, the tiebreaker, junior vocalists, either Christopher Eason or Christiana Algeria. Let's see who the winner is. Champion, once again, Christopher Eason. That was so sad. <laughs> so upset when I lost at eight years old. I mean, it was my first big upsetting moment of my life. Christina's first rejection was played out on national television, but it taught her a big show business lesson. I made her just buck up and go congratulate him because I figured, I said, honey, I said, you enjoy doing this, but you got to remember if you're going to do the kind of shows where there's a winner and a loser, you have to be a good loser too. It comes with this territory. She was so upset with me. <laughs> At the end of the show, I was through tears going, congratulations, I'm really happy for you. You know, it was, it was the, the right thing to do. My mom raised me well. She did lose on Star Search, but to the people back home in Pennsylvania, this was a really big deal. I mean, Christina was on TV. She was on national television. The teacher had this giant banner printed out, congratulations, and all balloons. And that was like a class assignment where the teacher had all the kids give her congratulations. And really sweet things were written on it. But the celebration was short-lived. Christina's star turn on Star Search suddenly turned ugly. So when Christina came home, the very same people that had encouraged Shelly, they were suddenly really cold and very jealous. Despite the pettiness, Christina's powerhouse pipes stop people in their tracks. A popular Pittsburgh talk show host couldn't help but notice. Good morning. I'm Christina Aguilera, and it's 6.30, and time to wake up with Larry Richard. Larry Richard, I love He's so sweet. We had a very early morning show, like 6, 6.30 in the morning. And for any singer trying to sing at 6 or 6.30 in the morning is bad enough, let alone like a nine-year-old. A rising star. Her name is Christine Aguilero on The Wake Up Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina. Well, she was uh, wearing a little dress, and, and she was so sweet and so cute. And her mom was a wonderful Shelly. And uh, they, they both came to the studio, and uh, I was trying to put her at ease and make her feel comfortable because I didn't want her to get on the air live and, you know, freeze up. Little did I know, once she started singing, she completely metamorphosized into somebody else, and we were all shocked. You know, like, wow. Look at this kid. Outstanding, outstanding. Thank you so much. She's so energetic. Christina's passion for singing led to other local gigs, including the Jude Pole Talent Showcase. The charity event raised money for the homeless in Pittsburgh and gave amateurs a platform to perform. Christina's mom called us when she heard about the Talent Showcase and sent us a videotape of Christina. It took about five seconds to decide that we wanted her. I'd like to introduce Ms. Christina Aguilera. She was very shy. She would show up and come and just sit over by herself. So it came time to sing and then she would get up. And it was, it was almost as if the microphone was a magic wand. And the second that she grabbed the microphone in her hand, she became a star.
Christina asked if she could come the next year and be in the contest as a contestant, like as if we would say no. <laughs> and um, of course she won, and she kept coming back month after month and went all the way. No one could beat her. As time went by, when people would find out they were up against Christina, they wouldn't show up. <laughs> I'm sorry that we have to end the show abruptly, but nobody else wants to come out now. Nobody wants to follow her. Singing was a huge outlet for me at a really early age. It was something that I could completely become in my own element, in my own world, and my thing, my release, and my everything. Honing her skills on talent shows and at block parties, Christina caught the attention of another Pittsburgh area mover and shaker. Walt Maddox, he is like part of the family at this point. He was a judge on the Jude Cole talent showcase. He used to be part of the Marcells. The Marcells were a 1960s doo-wop group, best known for their hit singles Blue Moon and Heartache. Walt is probably, uh, as far as an icon in Pittsburgh music, he's been a, a living legend for a long time. Well, I'd been working a lot with kids, and um, after I saw her, then I went and talked to Shelly and said, I do a lot of programs with kids. Would you have any objection to uh, letting me add Christina to the performances? He particularly saw the talent in her and took her under his wing. Walt gave Christina the freedom to perform the kind of music she loved to sing. I also really had a love for the blues and um, getting into to some of those things and you know, the Billie Holidays and even um, taking, you know, B.B. King. She came to me one day and said, I'd like to add a song to my repertoire. And I said, okay, what would you like to do? And she said, I'd like to sing The Thrill Is Gone. And I thought, where do you know about The Thrill Is Gone? Every time she did a little block party or something, um, like five people would come up and want her for their wedding or their political banquet. And here is this little child being hired as the entertainment for these places. Walt Maddox continued to keep his young protege in the public eye. Walt insisted Christina perform at one of Pittsburgh's most celebrated events. The Dapper Dan dinner in Pittsburgh is the biggest sports banquet of the year. It's the who's who of not only the sporting world, but also the people who spend the money to come to the dinner uh, to support the Dapper Dan charities. While we were there, someone from the Penguins said, we want you to do the national anthem. The little girl with the big voice soon made headlines. Christina ended up in the paper quite a bit. But all that attention didn't sit well with Christina's classmates. It was a small town celebrity kind of thing, you know, it's just like, got to the point where I kind of didn't even want to talk about what I was doing um, publicly or around the town, just because when I did, I would get such, you know, attitude from, from my peers. I used to tell her, honey, you ask me why this is happening to you. Why do these people hate you? They don't even know you. I don't know. All I can think of is that maybe God's, um, preparing you. Maybe this is a blessing. You know, it, it hurts, but sometimes blessings hurt because what happens is the strength that you get when you come out of the other side, on the other side of the pain, prepares you for really big things. Once again, Christina found comfort in her music. Whenever I would watch concerts, like on TV, and I would see, you know, the audience and, and, and how they would just, you know, just their roar and their just love for this this person up on stage and their appreciation for their work and and it was just like wow you know like I, that you know made me feel alive inside I knew this what I was meant to do she never seemed to really um, want to be anything other than the entertainer it never occurred to her and how long have you been singing oh since I was in diapers <laughs> I love to sing <laughs> ten-year-old Christina got another chance to show her stuff the folks at Disney needed some fresh faces for a 90s version of a classic 50s TV series. My mom ran across this tiny, tiny little article in the newspaper um, about an open audition, or a cattle call, so to speak, for the Mickey Mouse Club. Anybody could come, but you had to sing, dance, and act, and you had to come prepared. There were two men, Matt Casella and his assistant, Cortez. Oh my gosh, there was like 400 people there. I'll never forget this because the, Christina was in a group of 25 and I just kept looking over and staring at this little girl. I mean, she was so tiny. She had a little uh, resume her mom had written out with a pen. She'd written out, you know, she had sung the national 